Good morning. Welcome to the Joe Fosco Show. This is Joe Fosco. It's uh, Monday, October 10th, 2016, a little before 12 noon. I'm here with recurring guest uh, Michael Magnifici. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good morning, Joseph. How are you? Yeah, good morning for the about 15 more minutes of it uh, before we go into How lunch you hour. Been? Good, good. Weekend? Not yeah. bad. Yeah, it was just... Look very well. I appreciate Dressed that. Nice, yeah. Thank you. It's always nice yes. to receive yes. compliments like that. And, um... Uh, today's Columbus Day. Yeah, a lot of places are closed. I mean, yeah, post it's office. usually the 11th, but yeah, today post is Columbus office is closed. Day, yeah. uh, kids yeah. today, I don't think, uh, are taught much about who Columbus was. And uh, Well, Columbus discovered America. That's what I heard last time I looked into yeah, it. Yeah, and what I heard as a child was that it wasn't Columbus. Right, and there's been other... Uh, Maritago Basucci. Uh, uh, Vespucci. Another Italian. Vespucci. What, Vespucci? Okay, uh, I got the, the name uh, wrong. Italian? Uh, Another Vespucci. Italian, yeah. Theo, do you know anything? Uh, yeah, okay. Right. Theo knows. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, but, uh, it looks like all but the I think Italians there, have discovered There has even here. been other uh, theories uh, that it's uh, someone else. But why don't we get away yeah, from well, that? Let's pick part from that. Yeah. Um, interesting week in sports, which you know I'm a huge Cub fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, that first game, Joe, was literally, I was, you know, I, I didn't get to sleep till late at night that night. one nothing right. game. Sure. You know, um, it was unbelievable. I mean, I if the Cubs would have lost that game and have to, and I I figured they'd win game two, and they didn't win it comfortably. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't. You know, wasn't like a nine to two shilling, but they won five to two. Um, but they get their pitcher hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, he's right. uh, Heinrich got a you know got a thing in the forearm there. I don't know what that's going to be. They're not really talking about it, which they won't. Uh, sp sports teams don't put out their stuff right away. They're never going to let the opponent know what's going on. In football, you have to let people uh, have to let the people know. You have to let the opposing team know the injuries and stuff. That's how they scheme against you playing them. But that's you know that's a once a week thing. In baseball, it's an everyday thing. They could disguise it and say that he's not as hurt as he is, or he's really more hurt than he really was. But What's going to happen here? What I'm glad is that we did win game two, yes, five to two, and now we go against who is, you know, probably in my opinion, the uh, greatest post-time pitcher I've ever seen, Madison Bumgarner, and he's pitching against the Cubs, which I don't mind if they even lose this game because I figure we got three games to to win one, mm -hmm. you know, which could happen that you lose three. They right. did that in. Uh, they did that against San Diego in '84. They were talking about the first time the Cubs ever had a, had a shutout was, and I was at that game with Jack, mm. with the old man Jack. Oh, Jack Cerrone. Yeah, the late Jack Cerrone. Yes, we went to that game. Me and my wife, and uh, well, she wasn't my wife then; she was just my girlfriend. It's 1983, and they won 13 to nothing. And they posted a statistic that it was the first time that. A team that shut out a team on the mm -hmm. first game went on to win the World Series. Yes, and I forget who the team. That, it'll come to me. I'm sorry for not having that fact right in front of me, even on my notes here. Um, but I will get to it. But uh, yeah, I was at the game with Jack, and it was 13 to nothing. Mm. And uh, our dear friend Leo was at the game with us. You know? Oh, Leo Manolis. Yeah, yeah, right. And he had bet. Uh, Leo bet the other side. He had San Diego. He did, Leo, he did what Leo did well. <laughs> did what Leo did well was bet the loser. He was always good at that. And Jack kept going like this to him, like the stack was getting higher hmm. as the innings went on. But it was it was a wonderful afternoon. And I remember him making me wear a sport coat to go to a baseball game. Yes. And I didn't even really own a sport coat then. I had to take one of my dad's. You know, an ultra suede. Remember uh -huh. you, what your father wore? With the, um, I don't know. I, I can't remember that. Yeah, right. wore an ultra suede sport coat mm -hmm. to go to a baseball game. I'm like, why, why can't I just put on a pair of jeans and a, you know, sure. a, a t-shirt and go right. and you know my baseball cap and this and that. But we didn't go the, the normal way people go to a game. We, we went to. His, I was at his house and my girl was picked up, Karen, and we got to the game and. Uh, by limousine, 
They had a couple cocktails in there mm -hmm. and went to uh, Gene and George Eddie's afterwards. It was an afternoon game. Great so steakhouse. Yes. Very good. It was, in fact, I think my uncle, my late uncle Romy and Dom Sinise and a couple of other friends, uh, you remember Dom Sinise? Sure. The, uh, now late Teamsters official. Right. They were having dinner there the night Dominic drove home to Oak Brook and was shot in his throat by uh, an unnamed person. Oh, really? In the, uh, with a shot, sawed off shotgun or anything. Well, you know so anything I, about that, Michael? Yeah, I do. I, 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 I think he didn't tip the valet guy <laughs> very well. Well, no, I shouldn't. I mean, uh, it's it, we could laugh because he didn't die. No, if, if he would have we died, would be talking about it if he did. We're not. Been a horrible, we're not horrible those thing. Uh, Sinise family, were, they were very close to my family I know for many that. years. I know. I know. You've talked fondly of them through through our friendship. Mm -hmm. You've always spoken very uh, highly of them. But other than that, Joe, the, the sports world. Uh, Before we go further, uh, sure. a, a young lady, uh, Lori Hamilton, just. Uh, uh, sent in a question. She wanted to know if you're the same Michael Magnifici that went to Fenton High School, which I think I know the answer to that. Well, yes, I did. Uh, um, you could look at me still. Yeah. We can't see her. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Lori Hamilton. We still streaming? What, what question would she like to ask? It, it, did you go to Fenton High School? Yes, I did. You did? Yeah. 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 And I, it, it is bouncing into my head that I do know Lori Hamilton. It seems to she, you know, she she's has a little. A she knocked of you show. off your game a little bit because uh, she needed did. to repeat the she question twice. She was a twice. very uh, maybe right, somebody right I now she did right now. She yeah, has knocked she did. You off your game. She yeah. did, uh, and you're knocking me off my game <laughs> as we speak about Lori Hamilton. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, Lori is a very wonderful girl. I wish she would respond back. And uh, well, uh, Ms. Hamilton, if you want to reach out to Michael, just go to uh, write, uh, drop me a line at jfosco at americannewspost dot com, and I will put you in touch with with him. Uh, yeah, that would okay. be that would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, getting back to you know when Lori's ready to call and you know. Maybe we could have her on the show someday. <laughs> well, I don't know how Lori feels about that. You know, we'll, I don't either. We'll have to talk um, to her about it. So what's going on with the next uh, segment or the next? Oh, uh, what I was getting, getting into is, is the baseball. You know, obviously the Cubs are up 2-0 yes. in the series. Sure. And I'm, uh, I'm very confident. I, I really thought that the game one was a big deal for us to win that and then obviously win game two. I knew we wouldn't go into San Francisco you know, without a split, but I thought if we were game, you know, a game of peace, oh my God, that would have been a little, you know, detrimental to us as Cub fans. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we got Baumgartner going against our ace, Jake Arrieta, although his stats have improved that this year, but I believe that, uh, I think we'll, we'll close it out then. Mm -hmm. Baumgartner, he's just been so, and at home, he's been so good. Right. Um, but it's it's winding down. But my Boston Red Sox, they're down 0-2 to Cleveland. Who remember I was telling you that the my dream would have been to have Boston play the you know the Cubs. Of course. And it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know. And the the manager of Cleveland is Terry Francona, Talian. Um He's the one that brought Boston their first championship in 80 plus years at the time. I think it was 84, 85 years. And it would just have been that now that he's with Cleveland, maybe it's going to work out that way that it's not going to be Boston, but it's going to be the guy that coached Boston to their first World Series in 85 years. He'll be coaching Cleveland to maybe possibly beat the Cubs. And Cleveland has had their issues, you know, with not having a championship until this last you know, NBA championship with, uh, you know, LeBron bringing the Cleveland Cavaliers to the uh, to the promised land, win a championship down three to one. They came back and, and did that. So it's great. It, it's going to be. It's an interesting baseball is an interesting thing. Um, I'm very excited about it, and I don't think that any Cub fan, any Chicago fan, will ever see anything when the Bulls won, even the Bears in '85. Mm -hmm. You remember that. Nothing will supersede the Cubs winning the World Series. You will see an eruption in the city of Chicago like you've never seen yeah. anybody. Oh, I imagine. Oh, and imagine you know what? So. The, the Cubs just aren't 
just because it's us, just because I grew up as a Cub fan and, you know, all of that, nationally, the Cubs are getting rooted for. There's mm -hmm. people that they don't have a horse in the race, and they're cheering for the Cubs. Right. You know, the, the Cubs, remember, Joe, the Cubs were in, they were getting uh, Turner Broadcasting System back in the 90s and 80s. They were doing Cub games, of course. you know. And before there was, you know, national syndication that you could get anybody doing any games at all. But, you know, now you get every game in the world you want to watch. But I'm talking back when you could only get three or four games. Cubs were on Turner Broadcasting. He knew, Ted Turner knew yeah, that, of course. that this was a, you know, this was a selling point. And he put the Cubs on there. People love the Cubs. Yeah, you know, yeah, they sure it's do. not just us. Right. You know, I'm sorry for my over exuberance not a, not a about problem. the Cubs. Anything else going on? Well, um... You know, just a little football. I was uh, how were your picks from last week? I, uh, down. I I had. Boy, good thing you're not me, gambling anymore. No, thank yeah. God. Um, I had the Colts minus five. That was the early line. I think they went up to six and a half. So that would have been a, a loser. But right. at the time I said it, they were they would have covered the spread. And I had Cleveland and Green Bay. Green Bay won by six, and the line went up to seven, seven and a half. But I had two losers and one winner. Um, well, you know, typical of me. I, I I can't pick the right side of anything, but well, as Michael has said, as, as you have said in the past, just go against all of his picks. You just go, yeah. Well. And you, you know, I, I was getting pretty braggadocious that first week when I had four winners and one right. loser, and since then I've I've only had one winner on top of my losers. So yeah. yes, right. just go against whatever I say because I. Obviously, I can't pick them. Did uh, you know? I was wondering back. You were talking about the 1980s uh, uh, a little bit with the game, the baseball game you went to with Jack Cerrone, senior, or, yes. or the, I should just say the late Jack Cerrone. And um, I think you talked a little bit about the 1985 uh, Bears football season. Going back to that that time frame in the 19 early to mid 1980s, did you ever have the occasion to go to? Um, the Rosebud Restaurant on Taylor Street. Yes, uh, several times. Yes. Was there was was there a guy by the name of Johnny the Bug ever involved in that, or was it? Why do we? No, not involved in ownership or, or ownership. any any. No, he was just a patron. Uh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So now, when was it uh, that uh, Johnny the Bug had? Uh, he had a conversation with Jack. Oh, uh, Jack that, was, that wasn't the at late the Jack Rose, but That was at Park Place. Oh, yes, in Elmwood right. Park. That, that's and, at Elmwood Park, Illinois, former establishment of Elmwood right. Park, Illinois. Right. And who owned I, who owned the Park Place in Elmwood Park? Uh, watch, you watch. You don't want to make too much noise on your uh, okay microphone. I, I wired you up for heaven's sakes. You know, you, when you I wear know, a wire, I you, have know, a, you been, need to. Be you know what? I, I just getting used to being wired. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm not wired. I haven't been wired. And, yeah. But anyway, no, the, the Park Place was a restaurant on Grand Avenue. Did your dad have something to do with the ownership? Yeah, he was. A, he had a piece of it. How about Johnny DeFranzo? Yes. And, yes. and some other people. Some other people. It was, you know, yeah. um, the old man Jack. You know, old man, the late Jacks around. The late Jacks around. Oh, the, yeah. the, the mob boss. Right. right. Make sure you clarify that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> clarify yourself. Clarify yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't you got no tongue? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, uh, yeah, th th he was there, and I guess it was when sp I wasn't at this particular dinner. Um, it might have been a Monday, Monday night football thing yes. because a lot of the fellows were there, and when they got done, it, and Sponge was going away. This was 1981. 82. Now that's a fellow we talked about last week, Donnie, the late Donnie Scalise, yes, former Chicago police officer turned uh, uh, mid mid level Chicago mafioso. That God rest his soul. At this point, he can't. Be uh, mad I, at us I don't. For I think he that. was wrestling before that <laughs> comment, but okay. He's, now he's rolling. Now he's rolling. Yeah. Gotcha. But anyway, we still Spon streaming, uh, Theo. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sponge was uh, was there, and it was like kind of his going away dinner, you right. know. And uh, who's going away dinner? Sponge Donnie, or Danny Scalise? Oh, okay. And uh, Johnny the Bug was, was there. there, and you know. He would, wanted to make a toast, and he got up and made a toast. He said, "Sponge, Sponge, you got a five-year sentence." Try to keep sentence. the language clean if you can. I will. Okay. Uh, Sponge, he says, "This is the best thing could ever happen to you." What? Go to jail? Yeah. 
He said, this is the said. best thing that ever happened to you. You won't believe you'll get clean. You get, like, clean, not, like, clean, like... Detoxed. Detoxed well, yeah. I mean, just no more booze, no more cigarettes. Yeah, sure. You know, you'll get cleaned up. You'll work Start out Start eating out of vending machines, candy, and, right. and all that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Instead of, you know, eating junk all day long, <laughs> as opposed to this gourmet meal that you're eating right now, <laughs> right. Um, you'll, yeah, you'll be fine. It's the best thing ever happened to me. And, and I guess Johnny the Bug had done 10 years or something like that. Yeah. Straightened me out. I got back with my wife. Everything was wonderful. And he was, t and the old man Jack was sitting next to me. He says, sit the heck down. You said yeah. clean up the no, language. You could, uh, no, I, ahead, I, I won't say what he said, but no, what I heard he said. I'll tell you what, we'll put a little disclaimer in there about the uh, right. adult, uh, adult Well, do you want language. me to say it the yeah, way it was? Sure. He said, sit the fuck down, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Jail ain't for nobody. What the fuck's the matter with you? He said, yeah, but Jack, you know, the guy's going away. He's going to be fine after three and a half years. He'll be fine. You want to go do three and a half years, you <laughs> fucking right, okay, idiot? Right, got, we got, okay, we got the you point. said that yeah. I could go. All right, but we're just trying to put a leash on. All right. right. I was just imitating how Jack Appreciate said it. Appreciate it. You're very articulate. You did well, a very I'm good job. I'm being very, you know, those who authentic. Never, those who, authentic. Those who never met. The late Jack Throne probably feel as if they, they knew him now because the, you you portrayed the part of Jack <laughs> well, Throne extremely they well, <laughs> right? And he got uh, it, it's rumored he picked up a lot of his uh, psychopathic ways uh, as far as how he his anger the level of his anger would reach is how high it would reach from his from his original boss Tony Cap isn't that right Tony Capizio yes yeah he was one of the Capones yeah guys. sure. If you look at that picture, that the, one of the famous pictures that Capone is in, where he's got his arm around Jack McGurn, yes, and you see the guy, and they've you know put yeah. name tags to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, since then, right. and it's he's the guy in the white shirt and the white pants laying mm -hmm. on the side. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny you bring that picture up. There are uh, so-called uh, mob experts, mobologists who claim they've researched that theory quite extensively, and they are adamant that that is not Tony Cap in that picture. You know what, that, Joe, that could be true, because mm -hmm. I, I obviously, this man died you in 1957. Know him. I, was, I wasn't even the born. The thing that makes it a little difficult for me is Willie Messino, the late Willie Messino. He said it was him. He said it was him, and he knew he him very He acknowledged it. He, he I remember being at uh, the Chop House yes. downtown, right. and we were at one of those tall top tables and Willie and I were there, and that picture was right behind us. Right. And I says, Willie, look at your old, your old boss. Well, right. his old boss was Jack, yeah, but, I but mean, Jack's boss was this guy, you know, the mm -hmm. Eddie says, yeah, he's laying down, probably drunk. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. how Willie, well, Willie explained he didn't, well. he didn't disclaim it. To, I oh, remember I, a couple of stories Willie shared with me. He, he said that... Uh, uh, when Jack would send him to Tony Cap's house in the morning sometimes to find out answers to certain things, he wouldn't talk to Willie until he poured the beer and cracked open the egg. With it, tomato juice. It, with tomato juice. He'd drink yeah. that, and then he'd sit down and say, all right, what is he Jack He would tell want? Willie. Willie told me the yeah. same story, yeah. and he would go like this here. He'd come in the house. He says, you know, Jack wants... <laughs> and he would just put his finger up, right. and he'd say, I haven't had breakfast yet. Have you had breakfast yet? And Willie would say... Yeah, I have. Do you mind if I have my breakfast? Is that okay if I have my breakfast? Mm -hmm. And well, no, whatever, whatever, Cap. And he would go there and he'd pour a beer into a glass, mm -hmm. crack a raw egg in there, tomato juice, yeah. stir it all that was up. That his breakfast. Drink it down, drink it down, and then look at Willie and say, what does Jack want? Mm -hmm. Well, he wants to know if it's okay for blah, 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 you know, whatever, right. whatever, whatever their business, whatever, was. Whatever their business right. was. And he'd say, finish the last swig, he says, tell Jack that's all right. Yes. Sure. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> but he needed his breakfast. I remember it reminds me of the subject of a story Willie told me. He probably told you as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Tony Cap and the old man Jack were out somewhere, cabaret or whatever they were doing, and Willie was with. And as the party broke up, or the gathering for that matter, uh, Jack told him, follow the old man home, referring to Cap. Oh, sure yes, I did okay. hear that story. And I guess they're driving down Oak Park Avenue in Oak Park. The Cap, 
he, he wheels the car off to the side of the road, he gets out, Willie's stopped, and he, he accuses Willie. He asks, what, are you following me? He says, well, you know, Jack told, me, Jack told me to just make sure you get home. Turn this car around right now. <laughs> so Willie turns the car around and gets back to Jack's house. And Jack he gets said, pulled out by Jack. But Jack asks him, did you follow him home? <laughs> no, I didn't follow him home. He, <laughs> he pulled, yelled at me. me so Willie got screamed at by Jack. He was going back and forth on the same road forever, <laughs> trying to appease both of his bosses. Like, yeah. you told me to follow him home. Right. And then he goes back, did you follow him home? Make sure he got home all right. Is he home? Yeah. He told me not to follow him. What am I? Yeah. And I don't blame Willie one bit for being so, yeah. like, confused about that yeah. situation. Because and how I, the hell could you make well, yourself Well, Willie right? told me that he told Jack... Who was I supposed to listen to in this situation, him or you? And Jack, at the, after the screaming and yelling, he just he went flat on Willie because he knew that he knew that Willie he, should have listened right. to a he cap. He should listen to Cap. Yeah, right. how could he not? I mean, for yeah. Jack listens to Cap. Yeah, you know, right. I'm telling the guy. You know, I'm right. I'm telling you that your guy that's in charge of you and you're in charge of me. He says not to follow me. How the hell? You know, how right. am I in the wrong here? I don't see right. how Willie could be in the wrong there. Exactly. You know, I mean, exactly. it was just the. Funny situation. Those are funny stories. Yeah. But so, we, yeah, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. No, I was going to say about uh, the, the Johnny the Bug thing when Jack hollered at him about saying that to Sponge. You know, Sponge was a hell of a guy. Uh, I miss him a lot. Yeah, I know Joe. you do. I really I do. Know. So many. Uh, and he really, really cared for you. He really did. Now, I, you know, I don't know. I know that uh, the rumor is that what, before he died, Tony Doty was. Uh, somewhat friendly with him and taking care of him. Uh, well, Tony was always friends with him. You know, and Tony's a good guy, um, and I well, mean, Tony's a, he's a loyal guy, and he, okay, he felt like that, the, the, yeah, the he's a loyal guy that uh, Sponge, you know, mm -hmm. at that time needed somebody. I, I wasn't around at that time um, to be there for Sponge. I would have been, you know, because right. he is a dear friend of mine, you know. Me saying that somebody else was there when I should, when I wasn't, looks like you know something superficial different. or something. Yeah, I, but I, I, always, Sponge is always in my heart. I, I don't tell these stories about him in, in no negative way at all. I say it is you know praising him. He was mm -hmm. he was a great friend of mine, great friend of my family's. You know, right. he was family for Christ's sakes. If anybody was close enough to be a friend that wasn't related, Sponge was one of those guys. Yeah, he course. really was. He yeah. was just a he, he, I mean, not just his, you know, his ways and this and that, but uh, here I am talking about him right. years and years, talking about stories that were 30 some years now, ago. Tony Doty, uh, in my perspective, is a type of person that uh, tries, maybe tries too hard um, on certain things and when he does certain things. And I'm not going to go into details, whatever that is, people could rely on their imagination, but from what I understand, he tries very hard, uh, maybe too hard, and uh, I hope that, you know, he wasn't um, uh, taking advantage of the situation where you obviously have retired from the Chicago outfit, and certain people haven't, and I'm not saying Tony Doty has or hasn't, I'm not clarifying anything, but I would hope that he hadn't made your departure an issue uh, during his visits with Sponge on the last days, I don't believe so. To, I, 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 Joe, uh, to I just, to make yeah, uh, I Sponge don't, disappointed in you in any way before you know. He left if he did, I, I don't believe that he did. Uh -huh. I, that's just not. Tony's a, a, is a wonderful person. He really is. There's nothing that I could say in the world about the guy, and he's he's a good friend. I hope he considers me a good friend. He, yeah. he may not, but I consider him a, a good friend. Um, but I don't believe. Why wouldn't he consider you a good friend? I don't know. You know, just you know, people fall out of friendship. You know, yeah. um, that that happens. You know, I've yeah. gone the wakes of friends of mine that have passed so many years mm -hmm. um, that are my age. Mm -hmm. You know, that I went to high school. Well, with. you think you get a lot of? Uh, you think you catch a lot of uh, crap? Uh, sorry if to use that word. Lack well, of. That's you know, fine. So. It's obviously my lack of, uh, of having a better word to use. But do you think you catch a lot of crap over? Over uh, doing these uh, sports podcasts because well, you know, I'm sure they have something to do with it, yeah. you know. But, but I mean, that's not something that I'm concerned with because, mm -hmm. first of all, you're my you're a brother to me. You're my best friend, and I don't throw well, that you. statement out, uh, mm -hmm. around uh, loosely. Mm -hmm. I, I mean that you've been there for me as a friend, and you've always been there, and, and you're as family as family could be. 
And I don't, you know, me doing what I'm doing here, this is you and I doing something that I think is good. Right. I don't, I don't believe I'm harming anybody. Clearly I, not. I, I, I don't believe that. You know, on, on that note, I mean, let me interrupt, and I just want uh, any of the viewers who are either watching right now or may watch this at a later time, um, it's my opinion that Michael, and, and probably me, but Michael has... He has been wrongfully accused of doing things that, um, such as cooperating with the authorities, uh, wearing a wire other than the microphone he's wearing right now for the sports podcast. Uh, I would really like to know, in fact, I will, uh, I know someone who will pledge $1,000, who will remain anonymous, if anyone could bring information forward and show me who this man put in prison uh, because of cooperation with the authorities. You've got a thousand dollars, and you know I'll even make sure you get a thousand if you could, if you could uh, point out who I put in prison too. It would be very interesting. I want a name and a case number for both of us on that. Sorry, to No, I, I understand that. where you're yeah. coming from, and that was very right. nicely spoken. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, people are going to have their opinions mm -hmm. um, and their theories and this and that. You know, um, you and I have both heard it. We don't need to get into that over right. our podcast. You know, it's mm -hmm. not what we're here for. It's not our platform. You know, it's, it's something that you and I discuss in private. But uh, it, it's amazing to me that people do have that opinion, but you said everything mm -hmm. very eloquently, very yes. professionally, and, and it's I'll, the truth. I'll Why go, is it being the truth? I'll you know? go further to say that um, uh, it's no secret, you and I had an indifference a couple of years ago where we weren't talking for about six months. and We're we, sitting together right now, so yeah, our so indifference went by the wayside. The indifference is resolved, went by the wayside, right. is, is, is invalid. That, exactly. That in, is invalid, and at that time, I acted on what I realized to be information that was not accurate. Right. And I temporarily fed into the belief that you could have been a cooperator. Right. And I have since then. Well, I, I, I have I, since I, then corrected that and clarified that that, that was incorrect. The um, information was incorrect. The information was incorrect. You don't hold grudges, obviously. Obviously, I don't. I'm yeah. sitting here. Yeah. Okay. I right. would never do that. I, mm -hmm. You know, I enjoy this. I, I I love talking about the things I'm most interested mm -hmm. in, which is sports, and talking about, you know, old stories with old friends of mine, you know, Sponge and Jack and JB. And it's, it's harmless. Right. It's, you know, it, for our viewers, I hope that it's entertaining to them. Yes. I hope that it is because it's, you know, I get entertained by just, you know, right. sharing the story. Yes. When you and I, and we get a giggle out of each other, mm -hmm. which we've heard the same story. I bounce these stories off you a thousand times. And then when we do it with our listeners, mm -hmm. I just hope they get the same They're reaction. actually viewers at this point. They were, were viewers, They were yes. listeners when we were doing okay. the, the... so they're viewers. So the, I hope the, they're getting the same, you know, reaction out of it that I am. And I, I welcome any, you know, type of questions and anything in the world because uh, I, I enjoy it. You know, like I say, it's all harmless, you know, it's all harmless fun. It's about right. stories about people that most people right. would never, you know, this is somebody that they look at in a book and they go, and then for right. you to say that, well, you were with that guy, right. you know, you drove that guy around, you played golf with him. Those are, I think it's intriguing to people, you know. Well, on that note... Well, uh, yeah, I guess we could thanks, wrap it up. thanks for your thanks no, for your Joel, help every with show. every week. It's it's a more yeah. my pleasure than it is yours. I'm sure. I see you next week. Well, Thank well, you. You did. Uh, I, I lost sight did, uh, of the fa uh, of whether or not you did make your picks for tonight. I I did not. Oh, why don't um, we do that real well, quick? Our me, false uh, goodbye right now. Let me get in there and it's kind of yeah. It's frustrating. it's a little late. You know what? I don't have my pick for tonight in front of me. Um, bet the underdog. Just okay. We'll we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. And that's you know what? That's the best way to go. Is that I, I didn't name a team, but I just said <laughs> bet the underdog. All right. <laughs> See you next week. I'm sorry.